Recently, I got into an online conversation with an atheist. So it got me thinking, it might be good to circle back around and remember why it was I chose Catholicism to begin with. When people ask me about why I became Catholic years ago, I give a fuzzy answer, you know, like uh, the Pope, uh, Sola Scriptura, something, something. And it's not that I don't remember. It's just that, you know, after you've settled a thing, you stop thinking about it. Like if someone asked me why I chose a job 30 years ago, you know, there was a clarity to it when I first made the decision. But now I might need to dig a little deeper into the caverns of my memory to give a good answer. Otherwise, it might be something like uh, cool experiences, money. So I'm circling back again. Before I dive in, though, I wanted to address in this video some common misconceptions that I find people have who hate the Catholic Church or really dislike the Catholic Church. And I think I need to address these before I jump into uh, my whole explanation for why I believe in God, why I'm a Christian in particular, and why as a Christian I would choose the Catholic faith. So here's the first misconception that, or at least the first uh, point of disagreement that I have with a lot of people that I argue with about Catholicism. A lot of these people think that the Catholic Church is just pure evil, you know? I mean, seriously, some people have almost a primordial disgust for the Catholic Church. It's like an instinct, you know? It's like we hunger, we desire to procreate, and we hate the Catholic Church. I mean, they can literally see nothing good in it. Now, I get it. You know, we're in a time now, especially when no one trusts institutions. But the Catholic Church is the largest charity in the world. It also has the ability to reform over time, and it has. Western civilization has Catholicism to thank for so many of its values, if not all of them. A billion-person religion with a 2,000-year history is bound to have some dark spots. But the quiet, toiling priests... Sisters and brothers don't make it to the front page of the New York Times. And when they do, oftentimes they're misrepresented. A second point, or a second place of misconception, is that a lot of people think that the Catholic Church is not steeped in the Bible, or that Catholics are not steeped in the Bible. Now, if a Catholic person doesn't know his or her Bible, that's not the fault of the Church. We have a gazillion theologians in history to expound it for us. The Church holds forth daily readings in the Mass for the laity to chew on, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, every day. When I converted from Protestantism, it was partly because I read my Bible more closely. And it's not like I read the Bible superficially before. I mean, I have a bachelor's in Bible from an accredited Bible college. I mean, no joke. That's what they're called. <laughs> so if you want to have a conversation with me, I'm happy to crack open the scriptures. It supports my faith. Another confusion that I think people have is that they think that the Catholic Church is opposed to science. Now, Catholic theology goes hand in hand with science. We need to understand how the world works to best understand how to take care of it and love each other. Wait, a good example of this is how many churches responded to the COVID-19 pandemic. Bishops around the world closed the doors to public masses even though they had never done this before. Why? Because science has taught us more about viruses, you know, while our faith teaches us to protect the most vulnerable. Another example is Pope Francis's encyclical on the environment. He took the latest and most established science on climate change and other environmental issues and drew out how Catholics should live in light of the dire state of our planet. Now, I could rattle off a list of priests, sisters, and other deeply religious people who have contributed greatly to the sciences. Now, please. while the Catholic faith is not opposed to science, it is also not science. Some people hold the Catholic faith to such a high standard it could never be reached. You know, miracles are part of the proof of the faith, and supernatural things don't happen often. And that's why we consider them supernatural. Yet, if a thing can't be proven in a laboratory or tested in some measurable way, it's discarded by some. Now, that, this has a name, by the way, scientism. If that's something you ascribe to, that's fine. Just know it's a dogma like any other. No one can prove that all we ought to believe in and all we can trust is what can be proven scientifically. I think some jobs require a screwdriver to get at truth instead of a hammer. You know what I mean? Now, lastly, I want to close with this. I really don't think that everyone who disagrees with me is pure evil either. Right Behind a computer screen, I may not come off that way, but I gain a lot from conversations I have with people I disagree with. They just need to be had in good faith. You know. I hope you watch my next video where I talk about why I believe in God.